Okay, today I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to try and wrap a natural piece, a, a walnut slab, with three-quarter inch steel. And since I don't really have the facility or the skill set to do it in a blacksmith technique, which is definitely a, a way to do it, I thought if I cut up all these three-quarter by three-quarter stock rods and connected them side by side around the perimeter of my slab, I might be able to mimic the idea of steel flowing around the natural shape, which was my goal. Here you see me cut up all my small pieces. I get them collected and now this is my slab. And I got this slab when I was on a trip in Oklahoma a couple weeks ago where we all met up in a big field and cut up a bunch of lumber. I'm doing here the, uh, the unthinkable. I'm cutting off the natural bevel, but it's the best way I need to prepare the wood for what I want to do. And so I get rid of that natural bevel. The wood is about three and a half inches thick on one side and about two inches on the other. There I'm using a scrub plane to clean the top off. Now if you use any kind of slab, if you wanted to try and mimic this yourself, any kind of slab would work. But I think it would probably work best, or at least in this application, to have a square side. And now these are my pieces and I'm just testing them. I'm collecting them side by side. I'm really just sketching out here. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going. And uh, you see how the slab is kind of chalked up there. The whole edge is going to be three inches ultimately, or thereabouts. And now I start collecting them, connecting them together like dominoes. And this, each side became like a big belt, very flexible, very movable. And I wasn't a hundred percent, I wasn't a hundred percent sure how I was going to get them connected to the wood. But then it occurred to me, after I welded a bunch of them together, and I made one full circumference it was time to screw them in and you'll see me do that in a minute but I connected it completely around the perimeter and, and welding began to deform the belt so it got to a critical point where I needed to connect the metal to the wood so here you see I'm using the eighth inch pieces on the cut side to, com to mimic natural bark with the thick stuff and then kind of man-made cuts with the thin stuff and it was also a way to maximize the amount of three-quarter by three-quarter rod that I had I didn't have enough to go across all those cut sides. I made a rational decision to make it seem like it was a, the man-made cut was the thin one and the natural cut was the, the thick one. And you see how I'm installing the screws there. I'm, I'm embedding them below the surface and I'm going to fill it with weld. And here I am. I'm using my fume extractor from Lincoln because there wasn't much wind going on that day. And there I just welded them side by side. My original intention was to grind them completely off the weld beads but I realized what I was up against, even just the small amount of grinding here and there was just tremendous. The, well, this is a tremendous amount of grinding, getting the tops of all the pieces to the same height as the slab. And then I had to go in and weld between to hide the gaps and connect. And then I was up against a dilemma. What do I do with the weld bead that's right near the wood? And I said, let me just see what happens. And I just welded right against it and let the, the weld bead burn the wood and it's created a natural marriage the burned edge next to the organic shaped metal it worked perfectly in fact I really was happy with that decision I was kind of up against a dilemma because I thought I was going to kind of go for perfection but this is a perfect example of just kind of going with your gut and seeing where it goes and here I'm just doing the other side a lot of welds I think ultimately there was 130 pieces and do the math, how many welds would that be between all of them? And uh, I got really good at throwing down a bead by the end. You wouldn't be able to judge it by the image right there. That's the first side. But I was able to fill in all the spots where the screws were so that whole entire belt of steel around the outside edge becomes one full piece embedded into the, the slab itself. And now here you see this is the one long run. By the end, I got really good at it. So I threw a bead on the top between every segment. Then I grinded it down, and then I went back in with the welder, and then threw one long bead right at the edge to fill in all the, the machine shapes, the square natural shapes. And uh, make everything longer than you need to so that you can come back in and make it nice and flush. And that's grinding. I'm grinding everything with a 36 grit Cubetron from 3M, and they last very, very long. I did this whole project with two 36 inch, 4 inch with two 36 grit 4 inch pads from Cubetron. I only use two 4 inch grinding pads and two cutoff wheels. 
and there I'm just cleaning up the back side. And I love the texture on the outside. It, although the, the, the welds don't tend to necessarily go in the direction of real bark, they go perpendicular to them. It, it, you, get, you give it a, it, it still mimics that bark look. And now here I'm finally preparing the wood using a high grit, heavy grit on the, the belt grinder, on the belt sander, and then I'm following up with the palm sander. There was a couple of burns on the top, which I just kind of left. It didn't bother me too much. And this is, I'm just using the, the blackener here. It's a Birchwood Casey blackener, and I'm blackening just the outside. I did go in there with the grinder and clean off some of the, the pebbles and bumps from the welds and kind of got everything to at least a, a medium height. I didn't grind them completely off. But you see the blackener does its job immediately. And once, with anything that spills over the top edge, the, the actual raw metal edge, I palm sand off later and then in preparation for painting the top. So now I'm just using polyurethane on the top. And I like the way the polyurethane will ultimately dry and then I can give it a light sanding with like a 300 grit and then I wax it, which you'll see by the end of the video. I put the polyurethane on the exposed steel at the top. And now I'm making the base. I really want to just accentuate the slab itself. I almost wish that the slab could just float in space and without having anything underneath it. But I make a simple base that I've made before. And here I'm just connecting three pieces. I'm going to make like a Y-shaped three-legged base. And this is going to be my connecting piece. And the main reason I use this hockey puck is because those three pieces of steel were exactly what I had and I needed a little bit of length in each one of them. So I needed a transitional piece and I just ended up using that hockey puck. And uh, just for a little style. I'm not sure I love it, but it's done now. And the, the good thing about this base is I can use this base for a different top and I make a new one eventually for this if I, if I feel inclined. And this is uh, all one inch thick stock using my die grinder to clean out the welds just because they weren't so pretty making those little transitions from the flat to the round and now I'm welding the legs up I'm using my steel bricks to keep the the frame up while I weld the legs on the legs are 17 inches long and I had a nice bevel there where the one inch meets the the upright of the leg so I filled in the bevel and now there you go throw test nothing breaks off it's in good shape and now just using that birch with Casey blackener again and you got to let that dry and then hit it with like a steel wool, like a triple zero steel wool. And then this is with my, my lacquer spray. <clears throat> and here you see I'm just uh, giving it a light sanding and I'm giving it a waxing. This really needs to cure for a couple days. This is all just the same day. This will really bring up a nice buff in a couple days once that cures. And there it is, a finished piece. This was a nice experiment. I had no idea where it was going to end up. I certainly didn't expect to leave all the welds on the outside, but I really like the contrast of the texture on the sides versus the texture of the top. And the weld burning the wood, that's something new that I never would have thought of if I didn't just jump into this. So there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you to Lincoln. And thank you for supporting me. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned as much as I did. Boy, this was a big one.